Hello, and welcome to another tutorial. Are you interested in gamification? The ability to have your students learn and practice using some type of game. There are a lot of free tools available to do this. I have other tutorials on some of them, like Quizlet or Kahoot. This particular product is similar to both. It's called GimKit. GimKit.com will get you to the site. And this is free. There is also a pro version for $4.99 a month, but I have found the free version will work for pretty much everything that you're going to need to do to use it as a, a game and a little bit of a reflection piece or formative assessment for your students. Again, the free version does not require any downloads by you or your students. And you can use it on a PC, a Mac, or on any mobile device. It's web-based. As a faculty person, you have to create an account, but again, no software downloads. So you can sign up. Once you have signed up, you will then go to login. So I'm going to click on sign up. Here's the information as to what you can do with the basic kit. Again, I believe the basic kit is all that you need to do. So you're going to go to the basic kit. You can continue to sign on with Google or a email address will work just as well. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Once you sign up with Google or an email address, you'll get this choice. I'm going to click on educator and continue to register my account. After you register, you'll answer a few more questions about your particular job title and subject matter. You will then get to this particular location where it allows you to start a new kit. Now you can build one from scratch or you can grab an existing kit up in the search area. So I'm going to do that by typing into the search box. I type in interest rates and say search. And you can see I have some interest rate kits that are already been created and are already loaded into the platform. I can use one if I'd like, or again, I can create my own. If I'm going to use one, I will just click on the box from here, and I can go ahead and use it. You'll notice over to the kind of middle to the right section, you can preview the questions along with looking at uh, the correct answer, which is kind of highlighted uh, in green. And again, you can continue to look at all the questions. You can play it if this is the game that you want. Or again, you can go back and create your own. All the way back to the beginning by clicking on New Kit. You give the kit a name. I'm actually going to do Time Value of Money. I call it whatever it is that you want. If you had a language class, you would have the ability to maybe do some types of matching questions. You could have uh, Spanish to English, English to Spanish, French, whatever you wanted to do. I can choose subjects here or put in my own, say other if none of this works, and then hit next. I'm going to get an image that's going to be at the start of my kit. And I have various types of questions. I can pull from a question bank. I can import from a CVS file, or I can add my question. Uh, this is a new tool. I haven't really explored it, but it's create with flashcards. I'm going to add question because that's what I'm familiar with. If you notice when we looked at the answers before, I mean, they're going to be rotated or um, shuffled, so you don't have to worry about it here, but you're going to have the ability to ask the question, create the question in this box. You can add a photo if there's something visual that you would like them to then see and then answer the question about, and you can even add audio to this particular component. You're then going to type in a correct answer along with three additional answers that are incorrect. And again, it can be in text 
or there can be a photo if it's maybe a, an identification type of a question. And the default is to a multiple choice question, but you could also have a text input question. Have to be careful about those uh, because this is kind of a timed game and uh, students are going to be potentially using a mobile device like a phone or a tablet. So um, you want to keep what they might type in a text input type of an answer to a minimum because that could take a while depending on how adept they are at that. So as far as uh, the questions themselves, I'm just going to go ahead and type away here. So you see I've added a question. I've put the correct answer in. I have three additional answers that are not correct, and I'm just going to put add. And now I have my question. I have the ability to go in and edit the question, or I can add additional questions. I can finish if I'm all done. I'm going to go ahead and add another question. So I have created another multiple choice question. Again, have the correct answer and the incorrect choices. And hit add. I now have two questions. Okay. And again, I can go back in and edit them if I'd like. I can add additional questions or I can actually finish this particular kit. So let's say I'm done. And so I have my time value of money. I have the ability to play it right now. And then I have uh, some more options down here that I could do some things with. And this is going to be important when we get to things like reports, when you want to check to see how well your students have done. And when you get the play mode here, you have some choices. Basically, the idea here is that students, when they play the game, um, it is going to allow them to score. And the way that they score is by getting correct answers and by beating the time frame. So a student can have a certain amount of time for the entire quiz, and they can go at a speed that is fast enough for them to get done quickly and then get correct answers. And correct answers, uh, instead of points, they show up as dollars. Now these dollars allow them, if they would like to, and this is a part of the game that you could talk about and demonstrate, or you don't have to deal with it at all. You can just deal with final score, being the person who gets the most dollars. But I'll show you in a minute how you can do some additional things. So we have two questions here. The classic mode is what you're going to do most of the time. You can take advantage of the team mode itself. I do think uh, there are some limitations in the free version with the team mode. You have a few more bells and whistles if you're going to go with the pro mode, which is $4.99 a month. But I'm going to focus primarily today on the classic mode because this is something that can be done both in a live session individually with your students face to face but you can also do this in an online environment where students can play essentially against the clock and themselves but still you can see how the students score in relation to everybody else so you have some choices you have a time goal for this i could set this if i only have two questions maybe that's too much time. I could put one minute on it, two minutes, something like that. A lot of it's going to depend on the total number of questions that I have. And then I can do a race instead of a time where it's the first person to get to a certain number of dollar amount. Obviously, I wouldn't want a million dollars here when you're getting like a dollar per question. Or you can do all in, which is a combination. They try to earn as much money as they can within the time frame that you've created. So I'm going to set it as a time of two minutes since I have two questions. You can start with some cash. I generally don't. I just leave it as zero because they're going to try to accumulate. I don't do anything with the handicap. Uh, answer check. Allow players to view the correct answer after answering incorrectly. I like that. I like to turn off the music. I like to turn off the clapping. Basically, um, if you've played Kahoot, you know exactly what I'm talking about with the music. I like to turn off the music there too. Um, that's perfectly up to you, but I like to get rid of the distractions 
that might be more of something that's fun maybe in a K6 environment. I don't really know at the college level whether that's something that you're going to want to deal with. I do the same with the clapping. Basically, if you get the correct answer, they're going to get an audio clapping sound there. Um, players join in late. I like this aspect, especially if you're going to use this for an online environment where it's not part of a synchronous component. This would work real well in a synchronous environment where you're actually at going to try to get to all or as many of your students together, let's say at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, and you want to use this as kind of a reflective uh, learning tool. It's a fun bit of formative assessment, a great way to review, and you can go that way if you'd like. But um, the fact that most of the time you might use this in an asynchronous environment where not everybody is in class at the same time doing this activity, you do not want to not allow them to join in late because you're not going to have everybody being able to pull up at one time and participate in, in the game. Okay. Uh, there's other options down here with power-ups and what have you. If you're going to get involved in some of the other aspects of the game, like the strategy, you have the ability for students, after they earn so much money, they can attempt to spend some of that money to get other situations that can help them out. Now, it's a risk environment from the perspective of you could change the questions from one point or one dollar a piece to ten dollars per question or what have you if you have enough money to buy some of these power ups. Something to pay attention to and explain to the student is this is a risk reward type of a situation. So you get dollars if you get the answer correctly you lose the dollars for answering incorrectly. So just something to pay attention to and be aware of. So we have our stealth set up in this format. We're gonna click on continue. And so at this particular point, what we have is a code created that is unique to this particular uh, GIM kit. And so people who are gonna participate and play this particular version would go to gimkit.com forward slash play, and they're going to have the ability to enter this code and get into the game. Now, once they go here and enter this code, they have access to the game, but they can't play the game until you start the game. So keep that in mind. You'll have a list of the players that are involved in the game will show up here once they log in and get into this particular game. I'll show you that in a second. Also, again, remember that uh, there is no downloads for them. They don't have to download any software, and they can actually play the game on a Mac, a PC, or on a mobile device. Okay, so on the left you can see a mobile device. This is my phone, and it's asking for the code, and so on the right two-thirds of the screen that's kind of the instructor's view. So again, I uh, just went to that gimkit.com forward slash play, and you'll have the ability then to get to this particular spot and join a game. Oops, I don't need it that large. There we go. 79312 is the code. And I'll get that in here. So you see I've entered the code on the phone, hit join. It's going to ask me to put my name in. Now you can decide whether or not you want to have student codes, because students, if you want, they'll be able to see how well they perform. That might be part of what you want to do. You might want to keep it a little bit more private, so you could give students uh, a number to put in where not everybody knows what everybody is. Obviously, that's your call, or you can go ahead with the individual names. So basically, here's uh, some instructions for them. Answer questions to earn cash, purchase upgrades and power-ups with your cash, earn cash faster, and so forth. So when they're ready, um, there isn't anything that they can really do on the game until you go ahead and start it. So as a faculty, I'm going to go over here and start the game. And once the game is started, you can see that we have a player in here named Bob. And so the timer has started. 
And so um, Bob has the ability then to answer those questions. So you will have a list of your players, what they scored, how much money they got, and so forth. And you can actually go up here to view a report and to actually get that particular uh, printout that you need, or at least uh, identify the score. Uh, you could play again. You could use this. Once you've created this particular quiz, you can use this again the next semester if you wanted to. But just kind of another way of doing a little bit of uh, gamification, a little bit of fun while you're doing some formative assessment. It's a great way from a review to get them to maybe do a little quiz before something some type of uh, assessment that you're going to have, maybe a little bit of a review on a weekly basis. Maybe it could be something that's a review before a final exam. So something else, just another type of tool. Again, gimkit.com, similar to a Quizlet or, uh, Quizlet or a Kahoot. If you've played any of those before, you'll be familiar with those. And so just another idea um, for something that might be valuable to you in teaching and learning in your environment. And then finally, there's some things that you have to consider if you're playing it live with some students, whether in a synchronous online environment or whether you're doing it in a face-to-face -face classroom. When you start the game and the person as uh, playing the game goes in to actually join, that clock is going to start right away. So as soon as they go in to play the game, it's going to start right away. If you want to give students um, 24 hours to play the game, let's say in an online environment where it's asynchronous, uh, or more than that, you can actually put a lot more time uh, on that game, So which allows them, depending on the number of questions, to kind of spread out the amount of time that they're going to play. But just something to consider uh, as it relates to the time. I find putting... Uh, something like uh, a minute per question or 30 seconds per question. If there's some calculations involved, sometimes you want to go at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half. The purpose here of what I'm trying to do is not allow them the ability to kind of look something up. Let's just kind of tap into their memory. What is it that they actually know right off the top of their head uh, and see how that works going forward. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial called GimKit and looking forward to providing some additional ones in the future for you. Thanks.